Hi, my name is Heather Taylor and I'm a full stack designer at Sparkbox. I design and code websites and apps. This is what I do all day. Well, not really, but sometimes it does feel like that. I'm gonna share with you my path to becoming a designer slash developer. And when I graduated high school, I didn't know that I wanted to, I was very interested in design, but didn't realize I could make a career out of it. And so I decided to, I went to Edison State Community College, didn't really know what I wanted to do, was very interested um, in the psychology classes that I was taking. So I decided to get a degree in that. So I have an associate's degree in psychology. And then following Edison State, I um, realized that human resources might be a good fit. And so I started taking some business classes to earn my degree in human resource management. But life took over. I got married. I had children. Um, I owned a small business for a while in downtown Troy. And I also worked for some nonprofits. And then there became a point where I decided it was time for me to go back to school. Still really loved design, really wanted to learn more about graphic design. So I went back to school. Um, I went to Sinclair Community College and I earned my degree in visual communications. After Sinclair Community College, with my degree in visual communications, I continued to work for several different nonprofits um, within Miami County and uh, worked as a freelance uh, graphic designer, um, did a, a lot of work in that arena for quite a while, and then again, decided that I wanted to know more. I enjoyed making websites but I realized that um, once you start coding and start making websites, you soon realize that there's a lot more to learn. And so I went back to Sinclair Community College again, and I earned my certificate in web programming. After I earned my certificate in web programming, I found out about this apprenticeship at a company called Sparkbox, which is where I work now. They have a full stack developer apprenticeship and I was fortunate enough to be selected and to go through the program. It was a six month apprenticeship. It was paid, it was full time and it was on location. After the apprenticeship, I was offered a position as a developer and I took that position and I worked as a developer at Sparkbox for three years. And then recently over this past summer, um, I uh, transitioned into a front-end designer position plus developer, so I do both. I really miss design, I love design, and what I'm doing now is a blend of both design and development. So I'm gonna share a little bit of job and career information. Who is Sparkbox? Sparkbox is a um, web agency located in Dayton, Ohio. Um, we are a fully remote, um, agency. We do websites and applications. Here, we're just going to jump over here. This is our website, um, building a better web. Scroll down through here. Some great articles. Let's jump over to our work page and we can see the type of work that we do. We do work in experience design, web development, design systems, application development, e-commerce, and content management systems. So these are just a few of the projects. I worked on organized living, so I was able to contribute to that project. I've contributed to the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, and I am currently on a project for Stanford University. And I'm also working on Resurgent. So, jump back here. What do I do? I do design. And to give you an example of what that looks like, we're gonna jump over to a tool called Figma. Figma is where, is the tool that we use. It's very similar to Photoshop. Um, and to another tool called Sketch it is what designers use to be able to create um, what we call comps that are used by developers when they are coding. 
So this is an example of the site that we just saw. These are the pages. We, um, we took a look at the home page and the work page, and it's just a layout. This is where the developer can come in, um, take a closer look at um, the size of the fonts that are used, the background colors, the images, how things are laid out, um, everything that they need to be able to make the site look exactly as the designer has intended. I also do code. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We're gonna go, I use an application called Visual Studio Code. And in here, we have all the files that we need to create a website or an application. And I write primarily in, this is called a handlebars file, but this handlebars file will, what we call compile into HTML. So that's what this looks like. We have a lot of right here. This is, this is why it's called handlebars here at the little curly braces. It's pulling in data. So when it renders, so what you see in the browser is the data. And then we also have something called SAS. Um, I love SAS, SAS and CSS. It's something that I write a lot of. Um, SAS will compile into CSS. So I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard of HTML and CSS. Um, so these are languages that we use to compile into those two languages. I'm not sure that makes sense, but <laughs> we'll roll with that. So these are the styles. So this is what you see on a page. So here um, we have um, font size, how big the font is. We have colors. So the colors of the text, the colors of the backgrounds, the colors of buttons, um, all of those good things. And then we also have something called JavaScript. So this right here is some JavaScript that I wrote that when we, it's, uh, we're using a library, an animation library called GreenSock. And when we went to that work page on C Sparkbox and we saw some of those, um, those items that were animating in that was using something called scroll trigger. And so that is some JavaScript. So let's take a jump back here to our slides. So as I mentioned, I write as a front end designer and front end um, developer. I write in primarily HTML, handlebars, CSS, SAS, JavaScript, and PHP. I do write in a few other languages or I have experience in a few other languages, but these are the ones that I use the most. So what does my typical day look like at Sparkbox? I design and code. That is a very large portion of my time. We also have a, what we call a daily standup. Um, whatever teams that I am participating on, we check in every single day, see where we are with the work that we are doing. We also do client demos, keep the client up to date on how things are going. We do something called pair programming. That is where I will work with other designers and developers to um, usually problem solve a task. If something's not working exactly as we expect, the code is, is not doing what we want it to do, we will um, we'll sit together and we'll figure out what's going on. I also review code. We always review each other's code. There is nothing that I write when it comes to code that goes directly out to what we call production. Production is what you see when you visit a website. Um, it always goes through a review process. So um, I review the, my teammates code and my teammates review my code and we give feedback. It just is a, a way to ensure that we have the very best um, work out there. We also have what's called, um, we use a project management tool called JIRA and I write JIRA cards. So it's, think of it as you have a to-do list. You have a to-do list, all the things that you need to do. And sometimes you need to add extra instructions on how to accomplish those things. So you have a to-do list for somebody else. Um, perhaps somebody else needs to make dinner and you, they need the recipe. So 
think of a JIRA card as the recipe card of how to get something done. Um, and then I also do writing. Everybody on our team is expected to contribute to um, what we call thought leadership, which is uh, where we are writing uh, publications and resources and putting those out there so that when we write, we learn from that as well. And so it's a way for us to learn and to grow and to contribute to the community. And then I also spend time learning. Um, always want to and continue to learn and to grow so I can be better at what I do. Equipment. Um, I use a MacBook and then I also have an external monitor. That's pretty much all I have, pretty much all I need. I can take my MacBook and work at a coffee shop and still get everything done. So um, not much there. My work setting, um, as I mentioned earlier, Sparkbox is fully remote. The whole team is 100% remote. We, I have team members that I work with that are in Texas. Um, I have some in one in Atlanta. I have someone in Massachusetts. Um, we are all over the United States. What does Sparkbox look for in the people that they hire? There are three things that Sparkbox looks for. The number one is fluency people who are very good at what they do. Without talented people, we can't do great work. For us, the work is building the web. And humility, people who are humble, people who recognize they will be better when they crave and permit the contribution of others. Ego has no place here. We own and identify with operating as a service company. We serve each other and our clients. And then finally, empathy. People who are empathetic, people who understand how their decisions will impact the rest of the team. We expect people to have some level of skill in all aspects of the web and thus value others' contributions. So you may be wondering, how does what you are learning at school translate into what I do as a designer and a developer? So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is math. Everything you are learning in math is all about problem solving and using logic. And this is super important And that when you are coding, you are solving problems. And even when you're designing, it's all about solving problems so that the user can use a website or use a, an app. English, foreign languages. Um, these are super important in that syntax. When you're writing code, if you miss one single character, that code is going to break. It's not going to run. It's not going to look the way you expect it to look. And uh, so that syntax is really, really important because if it's missing, things just aren't going to be, um, they're just not going to function the way you expect them to. Education and training. So what do you need so you can be a designer or developer? You can go through a program at a career tech center, college and university, you can go through a booting book, a booting, a coding boot camp. <laughs> you can also be self-taught. So some resources that I recommend you check out if you're interested in code. Number one is code.org. Number two is codeacademy.com. And number three is code, freecodecamp.org. All of these are great free resources that you can check out just to get your feet wet and see if coding is something that you would like to do. That's all, thanks. If you would like to connect with me, my Twitter handle is Heather Honey, or you are always welcome to also send me an email at heather at heysparkbox.com. Bye.